Around 15 to 20 percent of the population suffer from hay fever and millions of sick days every year are lost through hay fever suffering. So it's very important for a lot of people but also clinicians use the information and it's used a lot in research as well. Well obviously there's hundreds of different plant species all producing pollen. Uh, in relation to hay fever there's a handful that we monitor closely and use in our forecasts. So early in spring we can see alder and hazel in the air although only a small percentage of the population are allergic to those so we actually start using uh, birch in our forecast towards the end of March and then we move into oak season and then the grass season and then the nettle season. And around 95% of people with hay fever are allergic to grass so that's heavily, a heavy focus for the, sea, the pollen forecasting season around June and a few weeks either side. So we have a number of sites around the UK where people collect and monitor and count pollen for us. We use that data and we add in the current weather and we, pollen levels are impacted by rainfall, the timing of the rainfall, wind, sun, temperature. All of these factors are added in and we produce a five day forecast for what we anticipate the levels of pollen will be. Well, having a lovely warm, wet spring as we have in 2014 is very important for production of pollen on the plant and then having a warm dry day with a gentle breeze will release all that pollen into the air. So weather has a very big impact on uh, pollen levels in the air on a daily basis and also production for the season as a whole. Well obviously monitoring our forecast and knowing in advance when the pollen that's relevant to you is going to be released gives you a chance to take medication. If you don't want to take medication there's a number of other things you can do. So you can avoid the stimulus, so avoiding the pollen, um, especially on your mucous membranes, your nose, your mouth and your eyes. So wearing sunglasses, changing your clothes at the end of the day so you're not bringing pollen into the house, showering and washing your hair, remembering that pets can bring pollen into the house, ha vacuuming around regularly will help to keep pollen levels lower in your house remember not to hang your washing out in when the pollen counts are high because your washing will come back into your house with pollen all over that all over your washing so there's a number of things that you can do well on our Met Office website you can find the pollen map where the daily levels are there for you and you we also have some health pages that talks about pollen and helpful tips and advice and there's some useful links there as well